time for a test on the bike show and this week I've got something special for you. It's a three-wheeler, a trike. Now stop all your moaning, your whinging, I can hear you from here. This is a trike with a difference. And what's the difference? Well, two wheels at the front, one wheel at the back. So far, so normal. But the incredible thing with this is it leans. So actually, three-wheeler, pretty much like a motorbike. But why on earth would you want something like that? Well, it just so happens that I have the ideal man to tell us why. The bloke who bought this for Oco. This is Tony Rodriguez. Tony, you're one of the very few people in South Africa to have invested in something like the Fuoco. Why is the obvious question. Matt, uh, obviously I wanted something different. Uh, safety is of paramount importance to me. And it had to be automatic. And I think Fuoco ticked all those ticks. But why not an automatic car then, Tony? I already own one. <laughs> And the beauty with this is you can obviously get through traffic. Correct. It's got the same footprint as a normal bike. So, yes, excellent in traffic, fairly safe, and it's fun. It's, it's a real fun bike to have. Which is the answer you get for all types of motorcycle. It's fun with the added bonus that it's a little bit safer. The Fuoco is, I reckon, a good-looking machine, but this particular example is a bit more special than standard thanks to some cosmetic love from Tony. Underneath the extra bling, everything is as originally specced, which means what we have here is essentially a machine of two halves. At the back end, you've got an uncomplicated and fairly run-of-the-mill scooter with a centrifugal clutch and a CVT transmission driving a single wheel. It's at the front that you find all the clever technology, a mechanical tilting system that features two independently suspended aluminium arms that pivot on a leading link fork. Don't worry if all that sounds like gobbledygook, we don't understand it either. But all you need to know is that it's a mechanical system that allows the bike to lean. With a weight of nearly 250 kilos, it's obviously much heavier than an equivalent scooter. So its 493cc single-cylinder engine results in the kind of performance you'd normally expect from a 250cc scooter. Why is it safer to ride? Well, consider double the contact patch at the front. That means extra grip when cornering and, of course, when braking as well. You can lock the front wheels on the Fuoco with very little danger of falling off. And just think about wet conditions. It's not uncrashable, but you would have to be pretty ham-fisted to lose control. So, what the Fuoco gives you is the best of both worlds. The fun of riding a bike that's still narrow enough to split traffic, with the added safety of an extra wheel up front. This is the very first time that I've ever ridden anything like this, a, a leaning three-wheeler. I mean, on the face of it, it seems really silly, and you'd think, possibly, that it would be difficult to ride. But I can't tell you, I have... It's been years since I've been this impressed by anything with, I was going to say two wheels, but three, obviously. It's so natural to ride. If you sat on this, blindfolded, I didn't realise there were two wheels at the front, you would think it's a scooter. The handling is that natural and barren, balanced. Gilera have done an absolutely, amazingly brilliant job with this. Like I say, I've never been so impressed with something. The quality of the engineering, the quality of the fit and finish. At first I thought, 120,000 Rand, are you mad? You could put a price tag of 180. I would be happy to pay it. It's all very well, Matt, saying you'll pay 180 grand for that Jalera. And don't get me wrong, it is a brilliant bike. But you can't actually buy them anymore. According to our sources in South Africa, they've stopped making them. So where does that leave you? Well, it leaves you on one of these. This is called the Quadra. Now, apparently, the engineers who designed the uh, Jalera Fuoco jumped ship and started designing this. So it's cheaper. It's kind of the same principle, but there's a lot of differences. But the important question is, is it any good? Let's take a closer look. The first thing that you notice is the use of larger wheels. But that apart, visually, there's nothing in it. If you look a bit closer, the quality of materials isn't on a par with the Jalera. But then again, it is significantly cheaper. Not to mention still being in production, so you can't actually buy one. 
the suspension system that allows the tilting movement is also completely different on the Quadro. Whereas the Gilera is a mechanical system and very complex with a lot of electronics, the Quadro has a hydraulic system, which results in the centre of gravity being some 40% lower and should be easier and cheaper to maintain. The engine is made by SIM in Taiwan, and with about 40 brake horsepower on tap, it's just about powerful enough for a bike weighing 200 kilograms. Comfort, riding position and wind protection again are on a par with the Gilera, although the mechanism that prevents the bike from tipping over when at standstill doesn't feel quite as solid and won't hold the bike up with the rider on board. You might notice that I'm not going quite as fast as Matt was on the Gilera, and that has nothing to do with the power of the engine or my relative skill. The big problem is the amount of lean angle the system permits. In short, it ain't enough. It might look impressive on film, but in reality, on tighter turns, the Quadro runs out of lean angle, meaning you simply run wide into oncoming traffic or into the kerb, depending on the direction of the turn. It does mean you have to learn to ride all over again, which isn't ideal. Having said that, if you hadn't ridden the Gilera first, which I had, then you wouldn't think anything was amiss. So maybe it's not a problem after all. So, leaning three wheelers, I thought they were a gimmick, but the Gilera for Woka. The Gilera is the better bike than the, uh, the Quadro. Oh, no, 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 grab this, grab this, grab this, grab this. Here's That's there. right, I'll have it then. Don't ever forget to put the handbrake on. So, do you like yours? No. I've got to be brutally honest, the concept of these is fantastic, but this just does not work. You shouldn't have to relearn how to ride a bike to get on one of these, and then unlearn it when you get back onto a normal bike. So what is it that doesn't work in your mind, then? You, you tip it into a corner and it just runs out of lean. It just run, then that means you just run wider and wider and wider, and there doesn't seem to be any way you can muscle it further around. I think it's, to be honest, I think it's a bit dangerous. Well, this Gilera Fuoco is like I keep repeating myself, but it's one of the most stunning pieces of kit that I've ever, ever sampled. And yet, this is also something of a sad story. Because if you wanted to spend 120,000 Rand on one of these, and why wouldn't you? The extra safety benefits are amazing, and yet it doesn't compromise fun in any way, shape or form. But you can't. You can't. I mean, Harry, what's going on? Well, you can buy this. It's, what, uh, about 85,000 Rand. So it's a lot cheaper than this would have been. But to be honest, even though it's the same guys who allegedly designed both, I don't know what they were doing with this. I think they were sleeping. They were trying to get around the patent, so they went hydraulic on that, mechanical on this. What can we say? Have a go on the Quadro yourself. It might suit your riding style. But the Gilera Fuoco, what an amazing machine. King of the heat. <laughs>